Vsauce, I'm Jake, and mazes are amazing. Literally. Amaze comes from the word maze, which back in the day meant to stupefy or bewilder. Now we use the term amazing to show great surprise or wonder. But mazes are still bewildering and an active part of our lives. They're in movies, books, toys like these little plastic maze puzzles, and especially video games. What is thought to be one of the first references to a maze comes from Greek mythology, with the story of Theseus and the Minotaur. The skilled craftsman Daedalus, who also built the wings for Icarus, created an elaborate labyrinth to contain the Minotaur. In the tale, Theseus, the hero, slays the beast, and in Alison Gazard's book Mazes in Video Games, she relates that myth to video games, where we wander through these mazes, these labyrinths, defeating monsters and rising victorious. Think about games like Wolfenstein 3D, Pac-Man, Bomberman, Castlevania, the dungeon crawler genre, or in God of War 3, they actually use Daedalus' labyrinth to house the key to Pandora's box. The Legend of Zelda series uses mazes a lot, like the Lost Woods and Ocarina of Time, where the volume of the music leads you to the correct exit. There's a part of us that yearns for that feeling of being lost, of having to find our own way out, of succeeding against all odds. It's being lost and refusing to ask for directions because we love solving puzzles. They give us this sense of agency, that urge to take meaningful action and see the immediate results of our decisions. So let's explore some of the amazing mazes that people have made in real life, starting with the largest corn maze in the world. When this maze took the Guinness Book of World Records, it was only 40 acres. Now this 60-acre corn maze at Cool Patch Pumpkins in California takes up as much area as half of Vatican City. Or you can go to Hawaii for the largest hedge maze. The Pineapple Garden Maze at the Dole Pineapple Plantation is about the size of two and a half American football fields. And the length of the path is almost two and a half miles. And hedge mazes have been around for a while. They started popping up in the 16th century across Europe. In W.H. Matthews' book, Mazes and Labyrinths, he mentions how hedge mazes were built for the rich and used for amusement. In particular, he describes one made for King Louis XIV that contained 39 fountain sculptures which required 14 water wheels to pump the water. In 1778, it was destroyed because it cost too much to maintain. At over 325 years old, the Hampton Court Maze is thought to be the oldest surviving hedge maze, and you can still explore its paths if you find yourself in London. And not all mazes need to be corn or hedges. There are ones made of ice, cellophane, mirrors, 250,000 books, window screensavers, or they can be drawn. A janitor in Japan spent seven years making one of the most intricate hand-drawn mazes. His daughter found it 30 years later in the attic and you can purchase a print of it if you want to solve it. Or you can solve the largest maze ever right now. Walter Pullen, who we featured before in a dong, has a website dedicated entirely to mazes. He includes resources and links so you can start constructing your own. He also has the world's largest maze, a 127 megabyte image that has over 27 million dead ends. But none of these mazes will keep you trapped forever. Underneath Odessa, Ukraine is a massive network of catacombs that were originally limestone mines. Nobody knows the exact total size, but it is estimated to be at least 1,500 miles, is multi-level, and has over 1,000 entrances. Many people have gone into that labyrinth and never come out. One of the most well-known was a girl on New Year's who got lost and it took two years to find her body. The reason Theseus was able to escape Daedalus' labyrinth was because he used a ball of thread to mark his path and find his way back. Mazes are there to confuse us, to frustrate us, and to amaze us. But mazes are also used to help navigate the mind. For over a hundred years, scientists have been putting mice and rats in mazes in an effort to understand spatial learning and memory formation in the brain. Richard Morris, a cognitive neuroscientist, created the Morris Water Maze. 
one of the most widely used. The maze tests the different effects on brain damage, functions of particular genes, and on the effectiveness of new types of Alzheimer's medication. Molecular biologist David Tank made a virtual reality maze that clamps the mouse's head in place, and has it run on an air-supported styrofoam sphere. With an implanted cranial window in its head, Tank can see the neuron's activity during the virtual maze run, allowing us to potentially understand how our brains function when it comes to making cognitive maps, and how our memory degrades. Mazes and labyrinths have continued for millennia across multiple cultures and are one of the most fundamental games that we have. So it's only natural that it would be a basis for the video games that we play today. They push us to try new paths, take a new direction, and continue until we succeed, whether it be in the Lost Woods or uncovering the secrets of our mind. And as always, thanks for watching.